Hi guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril Paints and today we'll be showing you how to paint the Gondor Battlecry Trebuchet, the stalwart linchpins in Minas Tirith defence against the forces of Mordor. In this video we'll be showing you how to create a nice aged beech tree look to your Gondor trebuchets which reflect their superior construction and the fact they've been around for a significant amount of time and will suffer some wear and tear. Uh, we'll mainly be using dry brushing for the bulk of this. Uh, so make sure you've got some good dry brushes with you. Uh, all the paints that you'll be needed will be listed on the next bit over. When you're assembling, make sure to give all the components a nice wash just to get any grease that may have been on the mould in the casting process. A lot of the mould lines on the model are uh, annoyingly in the centre of the planks, so you want to attack this with a flat, large file and just get as much as off as you can. Also be very careful when you're mould lengthening in the rope that goes down the centre of the trebuchet. This is very very fragile, the resin can be prone to snapping, so just be very careful and delicate when you're tackling this. Uh, we assembled our trebuchet with super glue, uh, and then we will be going on to base this with Citadel Chaos Black Undercoat. When you're assembling, it's good practice to test for everything first, you don't end up gluing something in place that you then realise you need to glue in after something else. Uh, we're going to be tackling the main body of the trebuchet as a whole entire piece, going from undercoat straight through to the final uh, dry brushing stage. Uh, we're doing this in its entirety first as we don't want to do all the base layers for other little bits on the model and then go over these when we end up doing the dry brushing for the highlights on the main body. So the main body of the trebuchet will be done first and then all the other details, the metal work, the ropes, all the other little bits will be done in separate stages after that. So we hope you enjoy the video we've got for you today. Please drop us a like, drop us a subscribe if you're enjoying the content, every little bit helps. And without further ado, sit back, relax and enjoy the video. We're going to undercoat the main body of the trebuchet with a mix of steel lesion drab and rhinox hide. Very important here to make sure you get in all the undersides and reverses of all the planking. Uh, the worst thing would be to finish this model and then realise that you've missed one inner join or one reverse of a plank. Make sure you're nice and thorough and give all these a nice coating. Don't worry too much here about going over any of the metalwork details. The dry brushing is going to hit these anyway so it doesn't really matter too much if you do clip these during the undercoating process. If, for whatever reason, uh, you don't end up with a solid finish after a couple of thin coats. It's not the end of the world. As we said, these are old machines and any slight streaking in the paint job here uh, actually won't be too much of a detriment to the model overall as we want it to look a little bit weathered, a little bit aged, a little bit worse for wear. Make sure you get the main body of the arm, all the little bits in between the rivets. Try your best in a couple of thin coats with long, solid brush strokes just to get as much of the model done with a smooth finish as you possibly can. It's quite tricky with the little wheels on the side, just to make sure you get all on in the reverse. Uh, again, if you opted for the, uh, the smarter way to paint this model, uh, you would have painted these separately and then assembled it, but we did not. We wanted to get the model done because we're just excited about all Middle Earth hobby. Uh, and at the end you should have a really solid looking aged wood slightly off tan look to your trebuchet base coat now we're going to use agrac third shade thin down significantly with lamia medium we get the entire body of the trebuchet a really thorough wash we're going to let this sink into all the wood grain effect which is all over the wood planks of the model and it will really help give some good depth and definition to the uh, the wood effect on this model try and avoid if you can, the ink pooling on any of the flat surfaces as this will just look unnatural and won't translate through terribly well when we get to the following dry brush highlighting stages. But just make sure, as with the base coat stage, you're nice and thorough and get all the undersides and all the reverses of all the planks that you can. Now we're going to increase the amount of Steel Legion Drab in the original Rhinox Steel Legion mix and apply this as a very thorough dry brush layer once the wash is dried. 
Now we're using an Artis Opus Series D size L dry brush. This is a really good rounded dry brush, which really helps to get in all those nooks and crannies while you're dry brushing this model. As much as you can, you want to try and go horizontally to the grain, which will help just to pick out all the definition of the wood grain across all the wooden planks and just give you as much detail as you possibly can at this stage. Be very careful not to be too rough here, particularly with the counterweight on the front of the model, as it's only affixed by one joint and can very easily snap off. Do not be afraid to turn your model in whatever orientation you need to, but just please make sure as you're turning it around your hand that the dry brush stage you are working on currently is dry. The last thing you want is unsightly fingerprints all over your wood grain. We didn't show it in the video mainly due to time constraint, but if you're finding it too difficult to get on all the reverse and in all the nooks and crannies with the large dry brush, you can tackle these areas with a smaller dry brush. It will just give you a bit more control and let you be a little bit more targeted in getting this wood grain effect all over the model. Now we're going to add some Zemesi Desert to the original Steel Legion and Rhinox mix. And we're going to apply this again, as we did with the previous layer, just as an all over highlight with the large dry brush all over the wood grain. Now we're adding the Zemesi Desert here just to add that little bit of colour to what would otherwise be a rather boring beige brown trebuchet. This will just help the wood grain pop a little bit more and help some of the sections stand out against some more of the shadowed areas. Uh, you don't want this to be quite as heavy as the original layer dry brush. We just want to accentuate the definition a bit further and create a nice sense of richness to this wood which has been aged throughout the decades. Don't worry too much if there are some bits that are still showing the undercoat with the wash. This will help create nice natural depth of shadow with the sun shining over the beams and casting shadow on the interior of the model. So do not worry too much. And again, just be nice and thorough. Be very careful with the wheels. You want to do a little bit more of a circular motion over the wheels. This will just help clip all the edges of the handles and get all the wood grain in a nice, effective, uniform way. Now we're going to add some pallid witch flesh to the original Steel Legion Zemesi Rhinox mix. And we're going to start by applying our first dry brush highlight stage. Now you want to have very little of this mix on your brush as we're only trying to again further push and accentuate these highlights and just give natural light lift to the very edges of this wood grain. With the counterweight on the front you're going to want to apply this in a bit more of a cross hatching type style just to pick out the wood grain from both angles is a very prominent feature on the model. Otherwise, continue as you have been doing, go against the wood grain to really help pick out that definition and give a natural sense of depth and shadow. Pallid Witch Flesh Edition here just helps to accentuate that slightly aged, slightly sun bleached birch tree look to the wood we want to create for the Gondor trebuchets. As they're not rich brown, they're not mahogany, they are quite tan in their overall colour, so this should be a really effective look for your Gondor trebuchets. Now finally we're going to increase the amount of pallid witch flesh in the mix to an approximate 50-50 split with the original base mix and the pallid witch flesh. Now we're just going to do a very quick dusting with very little residue on our brush here just to pick out the very edges and the very corners of all the wood plank. We're not doing this as a thorough coat, we just want to accentuate the most prominent points on the trebuchet which will be catching the light more than others. And there we go, your main trebuchet body should be done now. We're going to create a slight glaze with Abrax Earth Shade and Athonian Camo Shade, thinned down significantly with Lamia Medium. And we're just going to apply a little bit more aging and a little bit of wood staining to all the panels. So with a wash brush, once you've got the mix to a desired consistency, you just want to almost randomly and haphazardly apply this to all the wood panels. You want to kind of focus this on the inner areas of the panel because we don't want to jeopardize the look that the final dry brush stage has given us on the very corners of the wood. This will just give it a slightly stained look and help it feel that bit older when it's put on the tabletop. As you can see, we're just focusing on the very inner of the panels as much as we can. As you can see, we're focusing this just on the very center of all the panels, of all the struts, just to give it a little bit more definition and to further push the definition between the light and the dark areas on all the wood, just give it a little bit more of a rugged, dirty look to this age-old war machine. Now we're going to very carefully go around all the metalwork and re-base coat this with Rhinox Hide. We chose Rhinox Hide here, mainly because it will cover over very nicely 
any of the metal work that has been clipped by the dryer brush and will avoid having to have several coats put over it. It also means that when we're doing the metal work undercoating with the lead belcher in a minute, any streaks in it will show the Rhinox hide underneath and give it that slightly scratched, beaten, rusted look. Again, further promoting the feel of it being an aged machine, an old machine that's been around for a long time. So make sure you're getting all the rivets, all the bolts, uh, the bars and crossbars, and all the ends on the handle on the wheels. This can be quite time consuming, so be careful. Use a lay a brush with a very thin point and try and be as delicate as you can. Now we're going to use Lead Belcher to go over all these Rhinox hide areas and give the initial metal base coat. This covers really nicely and as we said originally any of the areas that do end up looking a little bit streaky uh, it will just help promote the realism of this model as the Rhinox hide will show underneath and just give it again that rusted tarnished look. And you want to be very delicate here and really try not to clip and bleed over onto any of the main body of the trebuchet as any bleed over here is going to be quite hard to touch up. Uh, if you do happen to bleed over onto any of the trebuchet you can use the layer mix just to touch it up and blend it back in uh, but we try to avoid this if possible because it would just start looking a little bit unnatural if there's multiple bleed points but with a nice thin layer just go over all the metal work make sure you're thorough to catch all the undersides and reverses again because you don't want any blatant brown areas sticking out once all the metal work has been done. Particular areas to consider are the underside of all the poles and bars, uh, the reverse of all the handles on the wheel uh, and the axles that connect the wheels to the main body of the trebuchet. Uh, once you're happy with this, we're going to be moving on to the base coat stage for the ropes. We're going to be using Rakar Flesh to base coat all the ropes on the model. So very carefully you want to apply a nice thin layer to all the ropes and the rigging particularly paying attention to the long rope that hangs down the central trebuchet, the spool at the bottom and the rope that connects the boulder bag to the end of the trebuchet arm. Keep your coats nice and thin, uh, rack off flesh can be quite clumpy sometimes and we don't want to risk any clumping on the model so keep your coats nice and thin, you may have to go over this a couple of times with the thin coats but a nice solid finish is what we're looking for here. Now we're going to use non oil to wash all the metal work on the model. Again, just as we did when we were applying the original metal work, nice and targeted. We want to try and avoid any pooling, so we're just looking for a nice, even coverage of the wash as much as we can, just to sink in around the grooves against all the rivets in the joins on the mechanism that fires the arm and the grooves in all the struts and axles that hold the main body of the trebuchet together. And we're using pure null oil here without thinning it down, as again, we want to promote that this is old metal, aged metal, it's just standing the test of time, we want to create some real depth and definition to all this metal work. Now we're going to be using Agrax Earthshade diluted with Lamium Medium and we're going to give all the ropes and rigging on the model a nice even coat of Agrax Earthshade here. This will naturally just sink into all the grooves, the ropes and the rigging on the model are very well defined so this will be very easy just with a nice light diluted coat of this wash so it will just sink very naturally into all the grooves and recesses. If you want, as we did here as well, you can apply some of this wash to the metal just to further push that rusted old look but it's completely optional and we just thought that this would be a nice addition to further push the realism we want for our trebuchet. Again, as we did with the wood aging, just apply this to the inner areas of the metal and where there are any joins and rivets where dirt and grime would naturally build up. Now we're going to use Iron Breaker and we're going to very carefully with a very fine detail brush. We opted for a broken toe fine detail brush here as they're very good at keeping their point, which is what we want for this stage. Pick out all the individual rivets across all of the metalwork, as well as framing all the metalwork now, just by drawing your paint in thin lines on the very edges of all the metal plating around the model. 
try and keep your paint in a nice thin application here. This will just help to create a sense of sharpness and create definition where the light would naturally be hitting off all the metal areas. This can be quite time consuming, try not to rush. The more precise and careful you are here, the better the overall look of all the metal work will be. With the poles and any of the axles, you just want to draw your paint in a nice thin line on the upper edge where the light again would naturally be hitting off these areas. And then we can frame all the middle axles where the joins of the metal all come together, all the way around nice and easily. as well as apply a very quick edge highlight just to the very edges of all the handles on the wheel. There we go, that is your metal work all done. We are going to be using some of the old Forge World Weathering Powder Orange Rust now. Uh, we are going to be applying this just as a little bit of extra weathering detail around the rivets in particular on the trebuchet and where some of the grooves and joins of the metal are going to be some of the more deepest recesses where the rust would naturally start to build up. If you don't have any of the weathering powders available the same effect can be achieved with the technical paint riser rust or any other slightly burnt orange paint. Now we're going to use a mix of rakar flesh and pallid witch flesh just to very carefully highlight all the individual segments on the rope and rigging down the model. Again, as with the original base coat for the rigging, you're going to want to thin down your paint a little bit here and apply this in a very targeted fashion. Be very careful here not to let the paint bleed over into the recesses as this will just lose definition in amongst all the rope and rigging, which is something we do not want to happen. But thankfully, as we said before, all this rope is very well defined, so it's very easy to work out where these highlights need to go and it's very easy to create some really effective definition without having to worry too much. So just nice and carefully with small controlled brush strokes, draw your paint over these raised areas and this will create a really nice natural looking effect to all the rope. Now we're going to use Pallid Witch Flesh and we're going to apply a very fine edge highlight just to the upper areas of these segments of rope. We don't have to catch all of them, we just need to catch the ones that are going to be mainly prominent to the light. the spool in the middle you can apply this just as the dot highlight just to the very crests of the rope where the light would naturally be hitting. The good thing with this is that we don't have to do the entire surround, we literally just want to capture the outside of the rope and just give that little bit of extra definition uh, to all the coils in the rope itself. And once you're done you should have a very natural looking effective rope and rigging for your trebuchet. Now we're going to edge highlight the housing for the metal bars across the centre of the trebuchet just with some Gawthor Brown. We're just going to very carefully just frame these and this will just help to create a little bit of a spot colour, a little bit of definition and to break up ever so slightly the sheer amount of birch tree look to the wood. We're going to be using Mechanica Standard Grey to pick out the boulder at the back of the trebuchet. And with a couple of thin coats, just pick out the boulder poking out either sides of the pouch on the back of the trebuchet. Make sure you get all the underside and the surround with the boulder as well. That way you've got a nice, clean, consistent finish to your rock. Now we're going to use null oil. And you want to give the entire boulder a nice thorough wash of null oil. Now we're going to use a mix of Mechanica Standard Grey and Dawnstone. I'm just going to layer over the more pronounced areas of the boulder and just pick out the very edges of where the light will be hitting this rock as it sits ready to be flung at some hapless orcs. So with a fine brush, just frame these areas and just create a bit of definition to the rock itself. Now we're going to use pure Dawnstone and we're just going to very carefully edge highlight the very corners and the very edges of this rock just to create a little bit of a sense of definition and light hitting this rock as it prepares to be flung. Just on the very edges, we're not going to go over all the lines we made with the Dawnstone Mechanicus mix, but just on the edges and the very corners and tips of the rock. Now we're going to use dry up bark to base coat the inner area of the pouch that houses the rock uh, with a couple of thin down layers just to create a nice smooth finish 
uh, the dry bark here will create a nice spot colour and help break up the overall very tan look of the model itself. Now we're going to apply a layer with a mix of dry bark and Gawthor Brown and again we're going to go over the entire thing leaving a little bit of the dry bark showing in the very creases where the embroidery falls down along the side and we're just going to go over this all again with this mix ready for our wash stage. Now we're going to use a thin down Agrax Shade wash as we did with the rigging and we're going to apply this to the entirety of the inner working of the rock pouch. This will just help to create a slight little bit of definition. Now with the previous dry bark Gawthor Brown mix we're going to apply this as another layer and we're going to apply this mainly to the protruding areas of fabric where the boulder is pushing against as well as the upper area leaving a small area of the wash showing in the crease where the fabric naturally folds back on itself around the boulder. We're going to do this on both sides of the pouch just to really bring the effect together as a whole. Now we're going to use pure Gawthor Brown and we're just going to very carefully with a fine detail brush just frame the outer workings of the interior satchel areas. I'm just going to draw this in long thin lines. We're going to leave that area in the middle, still showing the wash. We're not going to touch that area. We're going to create a few little stress lines just to show where the boulder is pushing against the fabric, just to create a little bit of definition. Now we're going to use pure steel legion drab and very carefully pick out the embroidering down the centre and down the outside of the rock pouch. Be very careful here not to clip either the boulder or the satchel as any bleed over here will spoil the look of the overall effect. But we do want to make sure we get the outsides and the slight inner that shows as the pouch closes around the rock itself. Again we want to do this on both sides and make sure you get the underside of the trebuchet as well. Now we're going to highlight this embroidering with Talon Sand and again as we did with the layer stage for the pouch interior we're just going to draw this down focusing mainly on the upper area and where the pouch protrudes over the rock it is holding. Nice concentrated control lines just again to create a stressed effect in the material. Now we're going to use a mix of Pallet Witch Flesh and Talon Sand and just finalize the definition down this embroidering with a nice thin precise line right down the center of all the embroidering on the rock satchel just again to make the last little bit of definition in this area pop that little bit more. And there we have it, your Gondor Battlecar trebuchet ready to defend the walls of Minas Tirith and the Kingdom of Gondor against the tirades and tyranny of Sauron and his vast host of orcs. We won't be covering the Gondorian crew members or the cobblestone basing in this tutorial. We've already done tutorials for these models. Uh, there will be links in the description below. So with these three tutorials, you will be able to bring the entire crew box together and make it look absolutely phenomenal on the battlefield. Please, again, if you enjoyed the video, drop us a like, drop us a subscribe. Every little bit helps. We hope you enjoy the video. Please join us next week where we plan to tackle Bilbo Baggins from the Fellowship of the Ring. But until then, we hope you enjoyed, and as always, happy hobbying.